So hi everyone, thank you for joining. Um, I'm just going to wait 30 more seconds for everyone to sort of sign in, register, get settled in and then we'll begin. So really great to see so many of you joining. Um, I'll give everyone 30 more seconds and then we can start. Okay, let's, um, let's get started. So thanks um, so much um, for joining us again um, for this Make for Tomorrow workshop with um, the incredible Jade Montserrat, who is our artist for today. So I'm Phoebe, I'm a project curator here at Hospital Rooms. Um, and just to go through a, a few tiny little housekeeping notes before we get started. Um, this is being recorded so that people can watch it later, um, but no one is audible or visible apart from Jade and I. And that's just for sort of security and privacy reasons. Um, we would love, love, love for you to upload um, any artwork that you make during the session to the Dropbox link, which will be sent um, around after this um, by Make Your Mark. And also, we would really love for it to be an interactive session. So you'll see at the bottom of the screen that there's a little box saying Q&A. And if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, anything um, to ask Jade, just drop it in there and then I can um, read it out to her during the session and she can also feed back to you. So we want that sort of conversational element that will be really nice. Um, so quickly on Make for Tomorrow, it's um, a program of workshops, talks and projects that's running um, across September, October and November within Sussex Partnership NHS Foundation Trust. Um, and it's brought to you by um, Make Your Mark, um, which is the Trust Arts and Health Programme. So please do check out their website because there's loads and loads of exciting events happening across those months and you can sign up via Eventbrite there. Um, so Make For Tomorrow is delivered by us here at Hospital Rooms. So we're an organisation that transforms inpatient mental health units with contemporary art and we work collaboratively collaboratively with service users, staff um, and artists to make that happen. Um, there are more um, performance and acting based um, events happening with Arts Over Borders, who are another organisation that um, bring musicians, performance and art, performers and artists to unusual spaces such as the beach or on a mountaintop. Um, so lots of very interesting things happening. Um, we also just want to recognize um, COGAP, who we're in partnership with um, for making the digital side of this program run so smoothly and be as accessible as possible. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce our artist for today, who is Jade Montserrat. Um, Jade will be working with Hostel Rooms in Norwich later this year. And Jade works through performance, drawing, painting, film, installation, print and text. Um, Jade is the recipient of the Stuart Hall Foundation Scholarship, which supports her PhD and her work from her Black diasporic perspective in the north of England. Um, and then these are some examples of Jade's work. This is a series called Instituting Care that was exhibited at Humber, side, Humber Gal Street Gallery and uh, Blue Coat in Liverpool. And there is a new um, performance that is being premiered in October. So without further ado, I will hand over to Jade and just want to um, reaffirm that please do put any comments in the chat box. We really want to hear from you during this workshop. So thank you very much. I will stop sharing. Brilliant. Um, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. And um, Thank you, Phoebe. Um, 
I just want to follow up last um, slide, which shows um, a text, a workshop that I did with curator Nikita Gill. And um, uh, that's developed into this um, film. So the workshop that we um, developed from uh, uh, that's uh, arrived today as well, it's uh, developed out of that, was also called uh, Drawing In, Drawing Out, Drawing With. And um, it, we asked audiences um, similar to today to consider a sentence and that sentence can be drawn and it can be performed. I've brought um, just a few examples that um, are sort of ongoing for me. Um, I steal uh, text or I utilize texts that I hear or see uh, that I've been offered. Um, one here says, different with every shore. Uh, another one, so she was free. And another, absolute rest. During this workshop today, I'm going to take notes on here as um, Phoebe reads from um, one text uh, um, and I'll expand from um, what I'm hearing at that moment and I invite you to do the same. Um, you'll be able to see how I arrive at a text based drawing um, that can then become uh, watercolours um, and these are the um, base watercolours before I start to embellish them a little but today we'll be um, using uh, charcoal and I've bought my um, mama of charcoal I won't be using this one but it's so big and I and so beautiful that I I, I can't help but show it show it off um, we've got some smaller bits here I, I think that some some of you have um, uh, this gorgeous uh, charcoal that's made of birch or willow, local to here. Um, so consider a meditation of words um, and to also, um, in, in some respects, become the drawing. So um, it will be really useful if you'd like to share um, your thoughts, your observations, what you've taken from the text that we'll be reading out and asking you to draw out and draw from and draw with um, uh, in the chat box. Um, and these workshops for me, it's a reciprocal process. So thank you again for joining us because um, it helps me um, arrive at new ideas within my practice. It allows me to be creative. Um, um, and I think that maybe we could start now, Phoebe, um, if that's good with you. Um, so what materials do you have there, Jade? Just, um, just so, because we did say charcoal would be great, but you can also use pencils and things like that. Yeah, I've got a pencil here, which I'll be using to um, take notes with and you know, um, whatever is that you have available. Ideally, if I didn't have this instrument to capture my uh, drawing, um, I would be coming outside, going outside uh, with you, I think, and I'd be um, using chalks or charcoal on, on the um, pavement outside. Um, and I encourage, everyone to uh, do that uh, uh, safely and um but i've just got really scrap pieces of paper this is from post that i've received and i've used um brown tape to um collage it together i really like the textures i've got i've kept all sorts of <clears throat> materials throughout my life including um, leaves of textbooks um, and, and again this is brown paper um, that came uh, with my uh, one of my birthday presents that I had on Sunday so that's um, what I mean I find it really difficult to um, throw potential materials out um, hence me really needing to build that composting comp composter um, uh, so if uh, yes yeah, so you're happy yeah, I, so we're going to be reading, I'm going to re, re, sorry, be reading first from a book called Shadow and um, 
Jade actually has that book here. Um, so I'll be reading from this book. Um, and there's some really nice imagery as well. So when we go through, maybe Jade, you can also show people what the images are like. Um, and also a happy birthday for Sunday. Um, okay, so let me get started with um, reading. So I'll read it in sections um, and I'll do pauses so you can sort of concentrate on what Jade's doing as well. But yeah, feel free to draw with Jade. Let us know what you're doing and how you're responding to the, to the text that I'm reading to. Okay. The eye has no shadow. All the children of the moon and of the sun, the earth, the water, the air, the fire, own no shadow. Shadow itself has no shadow. Shadow lives in the forest. It goes forth at night to prowl around the fires. It even likes to mingle with the dancers. But it is mute, it never speaks, it listens. It comes sliding right up behind the storyteller. Then when the last fire is lit, it goes back to the forest. But shadow does not sleep. It is always watching. If you open your eyes in your sleep, shadow is there. It has already stolen back like a thief and now it is spying on you. The eye has no shadow, but it sees shadow stirring the embers until the log on the hearth crumbles without a sound and falls to ash. Ash has no shadow either. That's why shadow is blind, for its eyes are two small heaps of ash.
shadow is a fall. They say also that it is the mother of all that crawls, of all that squirms. For as soon as the sun comes up, here are the shadow people, breaking loose, unwinding, stretching, stirring, branching out, teeming like snakes, scorpions and worms. That's why a person keeps an eye on his shadow when he wakes up and takes care not to step on it when he gets up. It could prick him or bite him, but shadow says no, it has no voice. Shadow is frightening, but there is no need to fear. It is not death that's clear, because it is there every morning and never says a thing. While death, when it comes, cries out. Besides, shadow never asks for a thing. It has no hunger.
Jade, I think your video is frozen. Oh, it's come back now. It, it's okay, it's come back now. Has it? Yeah. yeah. We, we've just had a comment in though, just asking what, what's the, what to describe your process in terms of making the notes and then creating the artwork. What's the kind of link between those things? Of course. Um, so I suppose it's like almost um, picking up a signal from the text so that it, then it can become almost a stream of consciousness so that I'm not just dictating or, or, uh, or, or Phoebe's not just dictating um, text to me, but I'm making associations as the text is spoken or I'm making a connection to something that really resonates with me. So a shadow um, is kind of universal and um, is also a, um, a metaphor. So um, without getting um, too personal or too uh, whatever, my last drawing um, contented dandy shadows. My dog unfortunately died at, at, on Friday and he was called Dandelion. And the idea of a shadow can also be something that's very um, uh, comforting um, that you've got idea of freeing a shadow. So I, I also had from earlier beaming, breathing shadows, and then I had um, sleeping shadow seas. And I think beaming, breathing shadows um, refers to um, very early on in the text because um, they talk about um, uh, how the shadow is uh, is mute it never speaks um but i don't have to um agree with that or abide by it like it, it can trigger something um exciting in my own cre creativity and that i think that maybe they they um yeah they beam out um an energy or you know um suddenly you you'll be struck by your shadow um and i think that that's a breathing in itself so um and also it relates to us. So really I'm making connections. When I first started um, making artwork and I was trying to explain all of this, I would refer quite a lot to a program um, that I just saw by chance because we I didn't have terrestrial television growing up, but um, it was called Mallets Mallets with Timmy Mallets. And it was an association game. And I think that maybe, um, that's what I'm kind of doing at a really base level is making associations that um, I can then, uh, that also ha aren't just relevant to me, but are, um, uh, I'm trying to say something with my work. I want, I want to connect, I want to communicate, I want to have the conversations and um, that's what I'm hoping, the readings, the discussions, the voicing, the moving in the performance, I'm hoping that that's, um, uh, yeah, that's the key for me in my process. Can you, can you share us the book underneath the, your, um, your phone screen? This book? Yeah, just to, so this is the book that I'm reading from, just to, because it also has its own illustrations that I think are really interesting as well. Obviously, we're not looking at those, but um, this is kind of, yes, the, the, so this is the book that I'm reading from. And if you have been inspired um, during the text to write things down, like, um, like Jade was saying, any associations that come to mind, do let us know um, and we can tell Jade um, in the chat box. Um, but thank you for clarifying that one comment, Jade. Should I keep reading? Yes, please. Thanks for the comment. I'll try and get to the page that you're on, which I think is this one. Yeah, um, it's the one before. No, it's that one. Yeah, right. It's that one. I'm just going to read the right hand side text. Yeah. Even so, watch out for though shadow has no voice like the echo, it can cast a spell over you, 
for good or bad. It is a trickster. It laughs behind your back. It mocks you and makes a fool of you. In the daytime, shadow is full of life. It waves with the grasses, curls up at the foot of trees, races with the animals at their swiftest, nestles behind the elephant's ear, perches on a stone, swims along with the fish. It follows man everywhere, even to war. Then this is oh, the, is this the yeah? Oh, cool. <laughs> this is the page that you can't quite see. <laughs> so, so sorry for that pause. Um, we've also had another um, comment come in asking if if this is if this is like your usual practice or usual process for making work, or if, if this is just for the workshop, or if it's one of many different processes. It's one of many different processes, but it's definitely a process that I use. This is how I arrive at text. So the, the, um, thanks so much for your question. Um, it helps me clarify for myself um, how, how it is that I work. And um, I, there's very little that I do that doesn't filter back um, or, or that I'm exposed to that doesn't filter back into my work. So everything that I read has the potential to be something that I f have a need to convey. And because um, making artwork, creating, is the language that I use, um, it means that, um, yeah, I 
I incorporate this as my, my main um, way of arriving at text. So lots of note taking, but more, but latterly the note taking, as I found sort of reading quite sort of difficult um, and, and actually writing difficult during um, this last, well, during this year with the coronavirus, just my concentration and focus is um, altered or shifted. Um, I am finding that um, it's almost like a meditation on just an, an activity as well that can that can help arrive at um, a title or a text or something um, as opposed to forcing um, trying to, to find text to convey it's there it's everywhere around us these urgent words that we need to communicate with one another that can be so elusive in speech but uh, potentially uh, is quite freeing if you're writing on the pavement or something, you know. And also, um, the actual this actual process of using the charcoal uh, uh, and playing with the um, lettering and texts uh, um, themselves are definitely um, part of the process. Except. The installations that you'll have seen earlier, um, uh, I'll have already arrived at the text before I go straight onto the wall, um, as opposed to here I'm doing it live and hoping for the best. But again, um, my philosophy is that there isn't a mistake. So, um, uh, yeah, and with practice, you become more confident mm. placed on a page um, or placing on a wall um, or, and there's lots of times that I forget how to spell very basic words, but that is part of it. The, the, the process is the work. Thanks. We just had another comment saying that um, someone wanted to say that their response to the text was to write um, uh, speechless and, um, no voice so maybe tapping into yeah some of the things that the text has been talking about this shadow this voiceless shadow which i thought was very nice yeah it's gorgeous and it's funny actually how some of the these texts as well like i'm not over emphasizing this but i just feel like these words that we use can have so much prominence if we you know make them bigger or um, collage them or something but they also tie in with um, protest uh, sort of slogans or um, uh, and I think that yeah speechless is so powerful isn't it and so evocative and um, I'm happy that that this has prompted something great thank you do you want to read the next bit um, sure. Shadow is always shadow. It needs no ornament, no tattoo. The zebra's shadow has no stripes. Shadow is magic. You had better not look at it too closely. For is it to the left or the right, before or behind, above or below? At noon, Shadow is everywhere. So we've just got a few pages left, so I'll finish reading those and you can carry on drawing Jade. Um, but keep the comments and questions for Jade coming in um, because I think it's a really nice uh, pause in the drawing to have these little conversations. So yeah, I'll keep reading for now. Yes, shadow is heavy when night falls.
Neither the eagle nor the vulture can raise it. In vain they try to soar into the air. Their shadow flops this way and that, like a clumsy bat, and crashes so heavily onto the ground that they, the mighty birds of the heavens, fall after it, worn out. No one can fight shadow. Go home, build a fire, behold once more, shadow. What is shadow in the crackling coals? Is it the spark? Light up. The spark has no shadow. The eye has no shadow, but shadow is in the eye. It is the pupil. Every breath stirs it to life. It is a game, a dance. Great, thank you, Phoebe. No worries. We've got another uh, person saying that they really loved um, the sort of focus on shadow as different animals and especially the worms and the scorpion they really like that yeah absolutely thank you um so i think i'm going to read from the um Tristan Sarah's Seven Dada Manifestos and Lamp Histories. I haven't read it all yet, but um, what I have done, I found really quite inspiring. Um, I love the way that the text is laid out on the page and this one's particularly good. I understand my screen is a bit blurred, so um, forgive me for that. I'll bring it closer just so that you can see how the font sort of I changes, um, make it really dynamic. I can also share my screen because I've, I've, I've got a, PD, a little image. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to share it? Please. Thank you. So no, it's not that big. Maybe a little better, but still blurry. <laughs> Thanks. So unpretentious proclamation. Um, and if you'd like to respond like we were earlier, art is putting itself to sleep to bring about the birth of the new world, art, a parrot word, replaced by da-da, plesiosaurus, or handkerchief. The talent that can be learnt turns the poet into an ironmonger. Today, criticism balances, doesn't throw up any resemblances. Hypertrophic painters, hyperesthetized and hypnotized by the hyacinths of the musings of hypocritical appearance, consolidate the exact harvest of calculation. Hippodrome, 
of immortal neither transparency nor appearance. Musicians, smash your blind instruments on the stage. The syringe is only for my understanding. I write because it's natural, like I piss, like I'm ill. Art needs an operation. Art is a pretension heated at the timidity of the urinary basin, hysteria born in the studio. We are looking for a straightforward, pure, sober, unique force. We are looking for nothing. We affirm the vitality of every instant, the anti-philosophy of spontaneous acrobatics. At this moment, I hate the man who whispers before the interval. Eau de Cologne, sour theater, sweet wind. If everyone says the opposite, it's because he's right. Prepare the action of the geezer of our blood, the submarine formation of transchromatic aeroplanes, metals with cells above the rules of the beautiful and of its inspection. It isn't for those abortions who still worship their own navels. Wow. Hunger Chief Dada, yes. <laughs> yes, that was I love it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was quite an intent. It's very, um, isn't it? I love the way that you, um, that you spoke it too, because it was, um, yeah, it was very, uh, uh, I don't know what the word is, but, um, it sort of gave a, yeah, it gave a intensity to it. And that sometimes she sped up and slowed down so that the words were quite long. I couldn't work out if that was the video connection <laughs> or if it was your, but it was really, yeah, very striking. I wanted to, I wanted to like embody Dada a little bit. <laughs> Do you know a lot about Dada? Someone's just asked no. um, if you know. No. Uh, but I've got this book here by Adam Pendleton that I really, Unfortunately, um, it's a stack of books that's just over there. And I think if I was to try and get it out, that it would just all crash on the floor. I'm sorry. But um, yeah, it's by Adam Pendleton, book called Black Dada. And um, I was really interested um, for a while when I was doing my MA at Norwich around 2008 to 10 um, in Hannah Hock. Uh, I got onto Hannah Hock because I first knew Kurt Schwitters. Mm -hmm. um, with Kurt Schwitters to an extent. Um, I loved uh, the, the, the work that he made, especially the, envi the environment. Um, there's a place, um, uh, um, the Mertz Barn, which I haven't been to yet, but I really, really like to, that's up near Cumbria. Um, and um, from Hannah Hock, yeah, um, I did a, a text or something. I don't know a great deal about Dada, no, but I really want to, because I think that it has such a bearing on so much that we're seeing today. Like also I see it potentially as a bit of a method for dealing with what looks like absurd politics um, you, around the world. And um, yeah, I need to make sense of it um, by perhaps um, applying um, absurdity and humor, um, which I'm not naturally good at. <laughs> Yeah, I love the absurdity. The the way that different words that you just wouldn't normally see together in the same page or the same sentence is quite amazing in that sense. 
Um, well, we've come for time. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much, Jade. It's been a really lovely session. And we've just got a few people coming in now saying um, thank you. Um, uh, it was really powerful. Thank you. Um, thank you. For the, we've got someone saying thank you for the invitation to grab a piece of charcoal. I found it just in time for this moment of listening and drawing collectively. Um, that, that person, thank you. I wonder about texts that are less poetic. Only yesterday I wrote, avoid violent ideologies, maintain sane and healthy, play and create. This is just that, more looking at the ambers, ashes and shadows with calm hearts and restful lids. That is amazing. Thank you so much for that comment. Um, um, do you want to respond to that, Jade? <laughs> well, I'm flawed. Um, I, I need time to, I want to read it again. It, it's beautiful. It was just beautiful and, and corresponds to what we were saying. But thank you so much. Um, yeah, can you send me that, Phoebe, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sending it to you now. We've got another uh, message has come in. Thank you so much, Jade. I wrote breathe between shadow spirit also mm. lovely thank then, you for sharing yeah. all of your things it's been uh, such a incredibly actually quite emotive and um yeah really really um amazing workshop so thank you so much jade um thank and it was great to engage everyone in this in this way to really sort of pause and think and respond um so we would really, as I said at the beginning, we'd really like to see the artworks that you made in this session. So please um, do upload them on via the link that will be sent out after the session by Make Your Mark. It'll be a Dropbox link and you can upload images of your work there. And then I'll pass those on to Jade um, as well as your um, really lovely comments. Um, sorry, just got another one. Um. <laughs> Ah, uh, this is a, um, another comment, a wash with, I think it's, um, it's almost a poem, actually. Um, a wash with charcoal at the hand, I watch the lady with bated breath, wondering what she'll bring to land. Oh my God, she's slightly mad and with issues of the sad. Great session, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got it. That person's got it. <laughs> so yeah. thank you. Um, a few things for me left to say, um, thanks to the Trust Brilliant Charity Heads On who have worked um, to raise the funds um, that we're able to do this by the Arts Council England NHS Charities and the Emergency Covid Response Funds. Um, please go onto the Make Your Mark website, we've got Michael O'Reilly coming up next week which is Drawing and Exploring Trees and mm. more to come. Thank you so much, Jade. This has been fantastic. Thank and thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, this will be available on the Make Your Mark YouTube very soon. Um, lots of love. Thank you. <laughs>